Okay, so again, if we look at this, at these different, um, basically experimentally obtained curves, um, again, the, the, the sun, the, the uh, thermal spectrum from the sun peaks in the, um, in the visible range near the green wavelengths. Uh, the visible, the uh, thermal radiation of, uh, of like a incandescent light bulb peaks uh, in the infrared region and is decreasing in the um, in the visible range. This is one of the reasons why th why uh, this is the primary reason why uh, light bulbs, incandescent light bulbs, are so inefficient because most of the power they get off give off is actually in in a region of the spectrum which we can't even see. And so since we're basically light bulbs are obviously designed so that we can use them to see, um, then um, we basically have to heat them up too high um, to, be, to be able to get much light at all in the visible range. Okay, that's why there's all these new kinds of lighting solutions that are coming up that are more efficient. And here are the different, uh, here are some uh, temperatures of black bodies in between. Okay, so you see that there's a very, that there's a very well-defined peak in the thermal radiation spectrum, the black body spectrum, um, the sh the peak uh, of the the peak actually depends on the temperature, and it shifts to longer wavelengths as we go out to lower temperatures. Okay. Okay. One another thing that we should realize when we look at these spectra is that if you integrate it under each one of these curves it corresponds to a particular temperature, you see that the total intensity um, decreases with uh, decreasing temperature. And that shouldn't be surprising, right? I mean, you have uh, charges jiggling less, and so you would expect less radiation. Excuse me. So in, um, in 1879, a guy named uh, Joseph Stefan uh, he's, he basically looked at um, the power, the total power radiated uh, basically by black bodies, thermal radiation, and he empirically established a law to describe um, the dependence of the total power. That's essentially what I was just talking about, something like the total integral of this underneath this, each one of these curves. Okay. And he found that the, the total power per unit area, okay, we're going to denote that, we're going to see this several times, so, so pay attention, um, uh, dPDA, the total power uh, radiated by the black body uh, per unit area of the black body, is equal to some uh, universal constant times temperature to the fourth power, where the universal constant was found to be um, this number here, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. So um, so obviously if you multiply sigma times t to the fourth, uh, you're going to get watts per meter squared. And this also uh, indicates that you, that this law is only appropriate uh, once you've converted whatever temperature scale you're, you have to, um, to Kelvin, okay? So this is for temperature in Kelvin, as I've indicated here. Okay, so um, that gives us, this is just an empirical law, okay, and, um, and it doesn't, furthermore, it doesn't say anything about uh, the shapes of these curves, okay, and it's the shapes of those curves as much or more than anything else, which was uh, the point of confusion and consternation for a while among physicists of the day. So before we go on, let's actually consider a, um, an example. Let's consider the example of uh, the sun's uh, thermal emission. On Earth, we receive about 1.3 kilowatts per meter squared of solar radiation. Okay, so that's, that's again per unit area. Okay, so it's the power per unit area. Okay, as I've written down here. And the, the Earth is about 150 times 10 to the ninth meters from the sun. And the radius of the sun is about 7 times 10 to the eighth meters. So that's basically the setting up the problem. We want to, uh, what we want to try to do is, uh, from this information, we want to try to use the Stefan Boltzmann law to see whether we can uh, determine the temperature of the sun. 